today I'm going to show you how to make a washcloth with a cross stitch design on top. And in doing so, I'll show you how to cross stitch on any crochet piece. So I've laid out the materials that you'll need. First, you'll need a graph, whatever design you want to cross stitch on top of your crochet piece. You'll need a finished crochet piece. You'll need some scissors. And since I have used cotton worsted weight yarn, I'm going to use my five millimeter or H hook. And you'll need a large tapestry needle for threading your yarn. And you'll need some scrap yarn, whatever color you wanna stitch your design in. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do before we do any cross stitching is make our crochet piece. So since this project is a washcloth, I do recommend using worsted weight cotton yarn. And my personal favorite, since I am known for my dish towel patterns, I like to use worsted weight cotton called Dishy, and you can find this from wecrochet.com. They have amazing colors and I love the drape that it gives my towels and it's just really soft. So if you haven't tried it yet, you'll definitely love it. So for this, I'm using my H hook, which is five millimeters. And gauge isn't terribly important on this project since it's just a washcloth. So if it comes out a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, that's completely okay. So let's go ahead and get started working on our crochet piece. So I did quickly just want to show you how I make my slip knot. I do make it a little bit differently from others that I have seen. So I wanted to give you another option on how to make one. If you're holding your tail with the end in your right hand, I simply drape the end over and then I grab the end from behind and I wrap it around and I'm grabbing the long side at the same time and I yarn over and I pull through and that's how I make my slip knot. So now we're going to go ahead and for this washcloth we will chain 33. And for the sake of time, I will not chain 33 on camera, but just to give you an idea, this is what your chains will look like and you will end up with 33. So when you get to the end of your chains, you are going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So here is your first chain right against the hook and we're going to be making our first single crochet in the very next chain. So you insert your hook, draw up your yarn, yarn over, and pull through. And you will be making a one single crochet in every chain across. And make one single crochet in your very last chain and this is what your first row will look like now of course yours will be a little bit longer since you have 33 chains at the end of your first row you will wind up with 32 stitches so when you get to your last chain I want you to chain one 
and turn your work. So for this pattern, the chain one does not count as your first single crochet. So since it does not count, we will be making one single crochet in the very first stitch, which is this stitch right here. And we'll be making one single crochet in every stitch across. And for anyone interested, I am using the color blush in Dishy Yarn. And again, that's from WeCrochet.com. and make your single crochet in the very last stitch. So again, you should wind up with 32 stitches in every row. And once you get to the end of every row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and single crochet in every stitch across. So just to save us a little bit of time, I went ahead and made our finished washcloth. So this is what your piece will end up being. Now mine measured out to, it's 32 stitches across and mine was seven and a half inches. So I worked mine until it was seven and a half in length. Now if yours comes out a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, you just want to make sure you keep crocheting until it's the same exact inch wise as your width and that way it ends up being a nice square. So now that we have our finished crochet piece let's go ahead and get started with the stitching. Now that you have your finished crochet piece let's go ahead and get started learning how to cross stitch on crochet. So what you will need now is your scissors, a large tapestry needle, and whatever color scrap yarn you want to use. I'm just going to use black for mine. And you also need your graph so we can follow the graph and stitch our design right on top. So first we need to figure out how much yarn to cut so we can start cross stitching. In crochet, you normally just keep, or knit, you normally just keep your yarn attached to the ball, but for cross stitching, you actually need to cut a generous amount of yarn before you even start. So I don't measure it. I like to grab a nice handful and mine, normally winds up to be about 50 inches long. You just want to make sure that you have enough yarn to stitch your design or at least most of it so you're not constantly cutting the yarn, weaving in the ends, and starting a new one. So then once you have cut your yarn, you grab your large tapestry needle and you just thread your yarn through. And you want to make sure that you keep a generous tail on the end because this is what we're going to use to weave in our end. Or this is what we'll weave in at the end of it. And now, since you have cut your yarn, we are ready to start cross stitching. So now we're on to probably the trickiest part of learning how to cross stitch on crochet. So we need to figure out where to start our design so that it is perfectly centered on our washcloth or any piece that you're making. So first you wanna have your threaded needle with your yarn, your crochet piece, and whatever design you choose to make. So it is important to note that one block 
which I've shaded in here, one square equals one X. And the X will be worked over two rows of single crochet. So this right here is two rows. Why you're gonna work your X over two rows is because it looks straighter and it looks neater when you finish. If you were to make your X over one row of single crochet, it ends up looking a little sideways and a little wonky. So you wanna make sure that you're always making it over two rows. And how you know that it's over two rows is you can see that right here, you have slightly larger holes and those are gonna be in the middle. That means the row on the bottom and the row on the top of this hole equals two rows. And I'll show you once we get into it. But just keep in mind that one block equals one X and it'll be worked over two rows. And it's a lot easier than it sounds and I'll go ahead and show you. So I always like to start my designs from the top down. It makes it way easier and you wanna start from the left to the right. So we're gonna be gradually working our way top down and left to right. So I did go ahead and already count which row we're going to start on. Oh, here, I'll show you. Since we have 12 blocks, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's a total of 12 blocks up and down. So since that is worked over two rows of single crochet, we're going to count two rows as one block just to make things easier. So this top one right here is two rows and that will equal one block. So we have one block, two blocks, three blocks, and we're going to start on these two rows right here, which will equal our fourth block. So this way we have three blocks down here and three blocks up here. Now, if you prefer counting rows, that's fine too. We have two, four, six, and we're gonna start our stitching on the seventh and eighth rows from the top. So once you find out where you're going to start as far as the row, we need to find out how far in we need to start our design. So I did go ahead and already write it down for you to make it a little bit easier. So since we are one in right here from this row, we are actually going to have 11 skipped stitches on the left side and 11 skipped stitches on the right. So what that means is, let me find my row again. So I always start from the bottom right to make my X. So I kind of like to put my needle in the bottom right somewhere just so I can count the stitches and it makes it a little bit easier for me to see. So this is the bottom where we're going to start our X. So let's go ahead and count 11 stitches that we need to skip. So this very edge stitch is going to be our first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And now I'm going to move my needle over to the next one because Again, I start my X from the bottom right, and we are going to be making our first stitch over the 12th stitch in the row. Since we skipped 11, we make our X over the very next one. 
So I'll hold this up a little so you can see. So again, we have two, four, six skipped rows, and we'll be working over this one, our seventh and our eighth. And then we skipped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we're going to be working over our very next one in the row, which is our 12th stitch. So I like to leave my needle right there until I'm ready to start because that way I know exactly where I'm going to start and it makes it easier. So now is the fun part. Since we found out where to start our stitches, then we get to start. So I'll see you in the next video. So now is the fun part. We get to actually start cross stitching on our crochet piece. <laughs> so now that we know where to start, I already have my needle in the bottom right corner of my X. So I'm going to just simply pull my yarn through and you don't want to pull too hard because you want to leave a generous tail on the back that we can weave in later. And it doesn't have to be too long. You just want to make sure it's long enough for you to weave in at the end. So I'm going to leave this little tail and you want to put your hand over it just to hold it so it doesn't pull through. So now we're going to make our first leg of the X, which in cross stitch world, our first leg is just half of the X. So you're going to go from the bottom right to the top left. And remember, we're stitching over two rows of single crochet. So this, this slightly bigger hole in the middle, we're going to skip right over that and we're going to be working in this top left hole right here. So go ahead and put your needle in the top left and pull through. And you wanna make sure that again, your hand is on the end so it doesn't pull all the way through. And if it does, that's okay, you can just redo it. So now we made the first leg of our X. So what we're gonna do next is go in the bottom left and now since this is our very first stitch, we need to secure the back of our yarn. So don't pull all the way through yet leave a little bit at the back and we're going to flip it over and you see how we have this nice little loop that we still need to pull through we are going to go ahead and put that over our end and pull our end through and now we can continue pulling our yarn so what this does is it makes a nice little secure hold on our end. So now we can pull through and it's not going to go through the front. So now we don't have to worry about this end as much. We can continue cross stitching, but you want to check the back of your work every once in a while because it's very easy for this end to get tangled up in your stitches. So you want to make sure that you're not getting any knots or tangles in the back of your work. Since this is a washcloth, or if you make a blanket or dish towel, anything that's going to be flipped over a lot and people can see the back, you want to keep it as nice and neat as possible. So now we just flip it over and we're going to go ahead and go into the top right of our X. 
So we're going to make the top leg of our X. And you just pull through. And we've made our first X. So just to show you, on our design, we are starting with this first block right here. That's the X that we just made. So then we need to go ahead and make three more X's in that row. Before we continue on and continue our stitching, I did want to show you that there are two ways you can make your X and it's completely up to you. It's whatever feels most comfortable. So as I showed you, you can make your X starting from the bottom right corner, going to the top left. And then for your top leg, we started at the bottom left and work to the top right. Now that's just what I do, and I've seen other stitchers work the other way. Whichever way you choose is perfectly fine, it's just whatever is comfortable for you. So if you want to make the X the opposite way, you start from the bottom left corner, and you're gonna go to the top right. So it's just the opposite of what we were doing before. And then you go into the bottom right. And you're gonna go to the top left. So either way you choose is completely fine. Uh, you just want to make sure that whichever one you choose, you make it the same way every single time. Because if you constantly mix them, they're going to look a little scattered and not as nice looking. So just make sure that you make your X's the same way every single time. So now that I showed you how to make two different or two different ways you can make an X, Let's go ahead and continue with our heart design. Now we can continue on stitching our heart design. So since this is much like a circle, we are actually going to work in a circle. So we already started with our top left and now we need to make three more stitches right next to it and we're going to continue to stitch all the way around until we get back up here. And now it's different for every design, but typically I always like to start from the top down and work my way left to right. So I'll go ahead and show you. So since we already have our first stitch, we need three more right next to it. So what you're going to do is go into the hole right next to the one of your, your bottom right X. And then we go to the top left. So we're going to go into this hole that we've already been in. And just pull through. And then we're going to go from the bottom left to the top right. So you just go in that hole, the same one you made your X in already. And then you just go into the top right. So we need to make two more stitches in this row right next to each other. And this will be the top left of our heart. We 
We have three, and we're going to make one more. Okay, so we have our four stitches, which is this area right here. We have one, two, three, four stitches. So now we need to go down diagonally, one to the right. So again, we're working over two rows, so we're going to skip this larger middle hole right here. We're going to be working our X over that hole. So I'm always starting with my bottom right corner and you can kind of see it makes this little square right here. We have four holes surrounding that middle one. So we're going to go in the bottom right and up to the top left, which will be where our previous X was already in. And then we go bottom left to the top right. And that's how we get our next stitch. And then from there, we're going to do another diagonally down to the right. So again, we're going to start in the bottom right. To the top left. Okay, so now we need to start going up. So this is what we have so far. We have our four stitches and down two. So now we need to start going up and work our way across. So we need to do diagonally up to the right. And it's super easy once you get the hang of it. It'll go much faster. So see this stitch right here? We are going to be skipping that stitch since there is one block in between these two. So now we have the middle of our heart done and then we just go up one more and we'll do the same thing we did on this side, the four stitches right next to each other. And then you just continue in that fashion all the way around until you get back up here and you have your finished heart. So I'll meet you back here with the finished design. So here is our finished washcloth, and if you do use a different yarn, you can make a baby blanket, you can make a bunch of squares and join them together. Uh, the possibilities are really endless when it comes to cross-stitching on crochet. So let me just go ahead and show you the back. This is what the back of the work will look like. And again, I'm most known for my dish towel patterns, so the back is visible, but it doesn't, it doesn't really bother me or seem to bother other people. 
um, but if it does bother you, you can always put a backing on it. Or if you're making blanket, you can put a fabric backing on it. It's really up to your personal taste. And that's it for our washcloth. But I did want to go over um, just some background. So I am Caitlin, owner of Oak and Willow LLC. I first learned how to cross stitch when I was really little. My mom taught me and I kind of just took off with it. So I didn't learn how to crochet until college. So I was heavily into cross stitch and I kind of just wanted to show you some things that I've done. Um, a lot of my larger finished pieces have actually been gifted, so I don't have those to show you, but I do have a few smalls. So I was pretty big into cross stitching, and then once I learned how to crochet in college, I took off with that. Um, it wasn't until recently, very recently, I opened my Etsy shop August of 2019, and recently I discovered putting the two together. One day I had an idea that I wanted to make a dish towel, and then instead of doing tapestry crochet, which I love, um, I just don't personally like doing it. It's a lot of color changing for me. So I figured, why not try to cross stitch on crochet? And ever since then, it just clicked that this was what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, my two loves finally came together. <laughs> so this is just a little small and it's on regular 14, I believe it's 14 Ada cross stitch fabric. And if you're interested in getting into regular cross stitch, I suggest going to your local craft store and most have small kits that you can purchase and it has the fabric, the thread, the needle, everything you need to get started. And then if you do decide to do more cross stitch, um, there's a website called 123 Stitch where they actually just sell patterns. And eventually I will be selling my patterns as cross stitch patterns too. So definitely stay tuned for that if cross stitch is something that you're interested in. And here's another little small. This was actually one of the first ones that I ever completed. And I added a little bit of lace right there. And none of these are framed. <laughs> I do need to get these framed soon. Here is another small I finished last Christmas. And if you're interested in any of these designs, uh, just find me and I can, I can head you in the right direction. So just to kind of show you what regular cross stitch looks like versus cross stitch on crochet. So you can kind of see a little bit of difference. So this is going to be way tinier than uh, your cross stitch on crochet. So I will go ahead and insert some pictures at the end of this video of some of my cross stitch on crochet designs just so you can get a feel for what I do. And again, the possibilities are endless with doing this. You can, um, as long as you make a single crochet piece, you can cross stitch on anything. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and pattern. And if you make one of these, find me on Instagram at Oak and Willow LLC and make sure to send me a picture and tag me. And I'd love to see your finished washcloths. And if you decide to stitch anything else, show me that too. And if you have any questions, reach out to me and I'd be happy to help. All right, thank you for watching. Bye guys.